that's beautiful yeah i know i've seen you know what they are and i just can't i can't place it i i think that definitely is civil war era we'll pose it to our fans if you guys have seen that before please let us know great find randy congratulations thanks in today's episode we explore the small village of moore store virginia tucked away in the eastern shadows of the Shenandoah Mountain. Could we have uncovered one of the earliest constructed cabins in Western Virginia? Maybe, stay tuned. His name was Henry Brock, along with his wife Mary and son Michael, for a hundred pounds of sterling, acquired 268 acres on Holman Creek. This land was purchased directly from the proprietor's office of the Northern Neck on July 21, 1749. The Northern Neck was approximately 5 million acres of land given to Lord Fairfax by the English Crown. It was Lord Fairfax who commissioned the survey of his land that included a young 16-year-old and future first president, George Washington. Due to the influx of German settlers moving into the Shenandoah Valley in the 1730s and the Virginia Assembly encouraging settlement into the wild western frontier, to buffer eastern settlements from marauding Indians. Lord Fairfax was quickly seeing his land-holding profits withering away to illegal squatters. However, the Brocks purchased the land through legal title and ventured west to settle their lands. Heinrich Henry Brock was born in 1720 in New York. Like many German Quakers before him, he traveled down the Great Wagon Road and settled on his land in what was then Augusta County. Early Virginia records show that the creek the Brocks moved on to had been settled as early as 1730. On August 24, 1831, Joseph Moore purchased two tracts of Brock land from John Hess and Andrew Zirkel. Upon the establishment of the U.S. Postal System, did the village take on the name Moore store. In this episode, we explore three properties in the village, all dating to the early 1800s. One, however, has a peculiar date of 1677. Did the cabin mantle get transported from the Tidewater region of Virginia, or could this be one of the earliest, if not the earliest, settler's house in the valley? It's hard to imagine. But today we try to uncover artifacts that might reveal the rest of the story. Stay tuned. Well, you guys, welcome to this episode of the Appalachian History Detectives. We are on site and we are at the old cabin. And uh, this is a mystery we're going to try to solve, and we're going to try to solve it by digging in the ground. And I'm here with Randy Reed of Six Day Metal Detecting. He's going to help me out here on this dig. And we actually have another guest here this is my buddy gordon he's in town so he's going to help us on this detection here's the house don't know if this thing was built in 1677 what we think is uh the family 
brought that mantle from the shores of Virginia when they came over this way and they put it here in this house. It is a log cabin and it was built as early as the 1740s. It's on a map. So uh, could it have been here 1677? I guess it could be. But we are far enough west in Virginia. I have a hard time believing that. Anyway, let's get started. All right, I got a hit here. It's shallow. I'm right off the foundation here. So it's probably going to be trash. But this is my first plug. Let's see what we find. All right. All right. It's going to be shallow. I think it's going to probably be cancelar. Let me put you guys down. Boy, it's more of that. All right. Yep. Lucky there. There's a piece of red pottery. Red clay pottery. That's pretty old. So we'll take that. We'll give that to the landowner. He's wanting the pottery. All right. Let me check this whole... See if there's anything else in there. Nope, that's it. So it was that right there. All right, you guys, I popped the plug. It popped out of my shovel, and I wasn't going to show you because I thought it was a shotgun shell. Because you see, riding around the rim of it there. And I really thought it was a shotgun shell. And I pulled it over, and there's two holes in it. And I think that is a button. All right, let's uh, take a look. Okay. So it looks like it says, is that a T-E-R-E-R-O? N-E-D, patent, maybe patent here. I don't know. If you guys seen anything like that, please let me know. All right, I got a good hit right here. I popped the plug. It's right in here. It's coin range. It's also aluminum range. I'd be happy for anything treasurable. Anything. Oh, it's a buckle. It is a buckle. I don't know how old it is. Still got the pin on it. Could be 1800s. Turn of the century. All right. I want to show you guys something right over here. But look at that. Look at that. It's a claw. It's a claw foot tub. Look. 1924, November 6th. November 6th, 1924. Look at that. It's missing one of the legs. I'm sure it's probably around here somewhere. These, th this is restorable, and a lot of people really like these old clawfoot tubs. And uh, you'll find these in really nice homes, to the, you know, today. And here it sits, right outside this old cabin, rotting to the ground. All right, you guys, we got barking dogs all around us. So when you're in a tight spot like this in a community, you're going to get that. And we also have... People watching us, questioning us, and that's okay too. I'm right here. I got a plug. I'm pulling out of the ground. It's choppy. I don't have high hopes for it. Gordon's right here beside me. He's got a choppy one over there too. But the reason I'm bringing you guys to this dig, this plug right here, is because I found something. I found a piece of something. A landowner asked me. He collects crockery. Now I asked him, I said, if there's one thing that we could find for you, what would that one thing be? 
and he says any pottery any crockery anything like that even if it's pieces of it i popped the hole and uh and i saw this first which is a piece of it you can see the red and then this came out and this you can see that it's been fired and it's been glazed and i would love to find more of it and i'd actually like to find a bigger piece of this and um, I'll, I'll give this to the landowner. This is what he's looking for and it's what he's wanting. So some treasures, depends on what you call a treasure, what people find treasurable. And this is a treasure today. What you got? Well, it, oldest find so far for me today. Yeah, I mean, that yeah. uh, predates the car. Yeah, right. right. So well, That's kind of cool. Yeah, horse bridle. Yeah, other than that, some mason jars uh pocket knife oh you found a pocket knife yeah oh that's well, good kind of old one but that's it all right you guys here is the 1677 carving on this mantle and let me pull out of here the mantle is tall i mean it's pretty cool that this log this piece could actually be from you know hand hewn back in the 1600s that's right but really just to witness this from that period of time and to be able to touch this that someone carved into yep. so many years ago. Yep. All right, so I am here with the landowner next door, Joe. That's all I'll say. <laughs> and we are in the old mill. And so Joan has kind of been giving me some uh, history of this place, and it's very interesting history. And so she's going to give us a little walking tour. Sure. Looky right there. What is that? I don't know if you guys see. Is that for the grain? Yeah. That is a. Oh, that's that is for cool. Grain the farm, um, come through for delivery to the wagons. Man, right there's the dirt. Yeah. Probably some old bottles in there. Could yeah, be some I old. Yeah, a wooden spoon. Wooden spoon. Oh wow. The old stairs came down right there. Now these are saw cut. I mean, these are these are. These are saw. So, uh, was there a, a, a saw mill nearby? Right next door. Right next door. Was a sawmill. Okay, right next door was a sawmill. And uh, you say this mill here, do you know the date or what it dates back to? We know that somewhere between the 1750s and 1810 or so, okay. 1820s, All right. uh, it's mentioned in the um, will of Thomas's son. Oh, wow. Okay. Which I can give you copies of, by the way. All right. So when I when I bought it, the water mill was gone. It had been sacrificed for munitions in World War II. And um, wow, I'm up for a, a bathtub. <laughs> Look and at that! It is awesome. My neighbor, who used to deliver my propane, told me he saw this one in a field about 20 miles away leaning against a tree so i went up i think the original one would have been bigger but um i'm thinking water wheel back you know <laughs> you know i know where uh, a, a derelict water wheel is just leaning up on the hillside too yeah just south of here and i and, I, and, and it's an old mill it's just collapsed and you know i see stuff like that and immediately i want to restore it well i i went with this and figured we'd, we'd do the pumping water thing for a little bit longer on our bathtub. But now we do at least have it moving, and my hope is to uh, build a fake race and have it just be a water me on that. But the race, that was a sawmill, and the race would have come from way up high. Hey, Joan, this is uh, Gordon Reynolds. Gordon is a, a friend of mine. He's from Atlanta, Georgia. Hey, Gordon. And he does, he does films. Oh. Okay. So he actually has a film company. Oh, cool. I'm not actually a metal detective. <laughs> oh, you're not. No. Todd's teaching me. Look at the little designs right there. <laughs> yeah, and this used to have a thing that looks like a girly pinup thing. Yeah. <laughs> they would use the trees as their. Yeah, those are big old cedar up. logs. Watch your head in some places. Wow. 
don't know if these holes are, are because it's karst or... You mean it. here, these? Yeah, and here, these would look like tunnels. But I mean, in the creek, you see that too. Yeah, muskrats. I would I mean, this this soil here is virgin soil from before they built this. I would say that these holes probably date back to uh, before they put this in here. And if that's the case, it would be, if that's the case, it would be muskrat holes. Okay. That's what this would be. Oh, yeah, black snake. Very interesting. Yeah, look, you can see where there's been a fire here. Right there. Well, it burned uh, twice, so rebuilt uh, twice. Very cool. So no surprise, but same foundation, I mean, and it's never flooded, as far as I know. There was a flood in Moore's store, but it, it didn't come this way. Go, whenever it does flood, it goes that way. Yeah, we wondered, with it being everything this close to this creek, yeah. how often this would flood in here. But, uh, maybe not so much. Like I say, I have seen it look like the raging Mississippi, and um, it usually will fill that, that side. Yeah, you're just high enough here that the water would breach at. Yeah. Very, very, very cool, Jane. All right, we're up on the main level floor here, and... Uh, Joan has shown me around. She's shown me a couple things I want to point out to you guys. It's kind of interesting history. You know, people over the years have marked their names on here with some dates. And uh, Joan was telling me that the owner of the mill accidentally killed himself by dynamiting a stump. He put a charge on a stump trying to pull the stump out of the ground. It didn't go off. He thought it was just a bad charge. He went over there and then it went off. And, you know, his, uh, we think this is the name. He was in his 70s, right? Did you say he was in his 78? It said he died on 1939. There's a date up here, 1919. 32. 32. 1932. So a little bit of a history here. And what an amazing place. And so there's there's another shoot for a green. Uh-huh. And this is a shoot. Part of a shoot. Part of a shoot. Um, I've got a bunch of them inside the cabin and with the tops of them. Um, Very interesting. All right, so we have an old ledger here that that was part of the mill at one point in time, correct? Mm -hmm. And uh, this ledger was actually in the attic of the house next door. Wait, 1810. 18, the original house. Yeah. Okay, so in rebuilt, this... Rebuilt uh, after the Civil War. Okay. And so this here is going to date earlier than that. Yes, this okay. is from 1861. 1861. So this is, man, during the, you know, the outbreak of the Civil War, they're sitting here doing business. Yeah. Well, that's cool. That's awesome. And that calligraphy, it's just beautiful. The DR means debtor. So each one of these people would have um, had an account. Where they yep. traded things. Yep, bartered. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's awesome. And, and and to think that they did that with a feather. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd love to see how they did that. Um, but June twenty second, June. It goes so twenty third. Wow. Wonder and Weirman were the <gasps> Doctor Wonder. Mm -hmm. And Weirman, they both had married more sisters. Okay. And um. They had they ran the store, and lived across the street, kept the books. Oh, that's awesome! But it makes you realize why they valued these so much that you could rebuild, but you could never replace knowing who owes you money. Okay, so let me explain to my fans because I haven't told them yet. the The place burned down. The, the original house that was built around eighteen ten burned down, but the whole community burned. Yes, right? the whole village. So the whole village burned down. And it burned down on two different occasions. And uh, th this was in the first fire. The second. The second fire. Okay, so the only thing that was saved were the ledgers from the old mill. Yeah. And um, and these were stored in the attic of the house next door. 
and the house was reconstructed in 1870 so that I'm going to show them the house so the house you're going to see these books were in the attic of it and that house was built in 1870 but these books predate that house so they were saved essentially you know then they survived the second fire yes. too okay wow that's awesome first fire would have been uh, Custer Foundation. now is that the famous George Custer George from... Custer the, the wow. Scott. Thank you so much. Yeah. This building here was built in 1810. And uh, I was told that it served as a post office and a store at one time. But it was actually originally built for slave quarters. So this was a slave quarters building. And there's two exits on the other side. There's an old building here. Chimney you see here in the background. That's an old chimney. That chimney we believe went to a cabin that was also built at the same 1810 time frame. This uh, house here, this used to be a doctor's house. There was a cabin here that predates this one here. This one was built in 1870 and uh, this community all burned down. So this was a rebuilt after the Civil War, but there was an older house that sat here. I hope you guys enjoyed that little video clip of the mill. The uh, landowner came out, saw us out here, metal detecting came out, and we got talking, and this is just what happens. So you get to visit, and it opens up the other doors to other permissions. And actually, that's how we got this one. It was deep, about six inches deep. I popped it out, and I thought it was garbage, but I don't think it is. And I have found melted pewter already. And so I believe this house here, this building here, burned down. And I think we got some fancy right here. Let's take a look. Now, what is that? Looky there. It looks like a hair brooch or a belt buckle. Look how delicate that is. I don't even want to touch it. It is ready to fall apart. And look at that. We're going to clean that up. That's awesome. That's going to be something... That's going to be something great. All right. All right. That's a good sign. Let's keep going. Randy had found something awesomely cool. Yeah, it got locked up. Oh, my gosh. That is gorgeous. Isn't that cool? That is, that's a find of the day right there. Well, this... Uh oh, you got something else? I do. This could be fun. I don't know what this is. I think I know what it is. And if I'm right, I'm super pumped. I mean, get it out of here. Now, oh, what? That looks like a little mini gun. Well, is what it looks like to me. This piece here, to me, you know, is all sling. Yeah, Civil gun. War. And I think these these have holes in them. Yep. And I think that would have pinned into the stock. This would have been the ramrod guy. Uh, I think you're right. <laughs> I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. I don't <laughs> that's know. awesome. But I think that would be the ramrod guide. And then that was for the sling. I think that's what it is. All right, we just caught up with Gordon. Actually, he just caught up with us. And, uh, and he found something very interesting down below that cabin. Surely not that. Not that. Looky there. Look at that gold gilt. Oh, that is a, looks like a shamrock on there. It's a two piece button with gold gilt. The shank is still on it. I mean, dude, that's, that's Civil War earlier. Yeah. That is awesome. It's great. All right, he's on the board. All right. Randy's got something. Let's go take a look. Oh, that definitely is Civil War. Yeah, but I just I can't think of what it is. I mean, it's like a, it was like a, like a belt or, yeah, I was just sitting, Gorgeous. like look how shallow it was. Two and a half, three inches. That's beautiful. Yeah, I know. I've seen, you know, what they are and I just can't, I can't place it. We'll pose it to our fans. If you guys have seen that before, please let us know. Great find, Randy. Congratulations. Thanks. Okay, popped the plug, pulled it out, 
and it could be trashy. It rang up a solid 29. Let me see here. Let me see if we can get a reading on it. You know what? It looks silver. It's not heavy like silver though. Alright. I think it's a tag. Could be a tax tag. It's Virginia something. All right, I'll clean that up and uh, we'll take a look at it at the end of the video. All right, I just found my find of the day. Of all the pennies and coins I found today, I finally found a weedy. I know, thrilling. Hey, sometimes it is thrilling. <laughs> all right, I popped the plug, pulled it out, and I took a look at it. And it's, it's chewy. It is chewy. But it is a wheat scent. Yep. You can see it right. Right there. One cent. Let's see if we can get a date on it. It's in real bad shape. It is in bad shape. Alright. Well, I don't know if I'm going to get a date on that or not. We'll clean it up. We'll take a look at it. Man, that is awesome. Yeah, some kind of, like a I don't token. know. I have no idea. Like the back of it, you can see it was hollow. Yeah, it's like and, a medallion. Yeah, something like that. Looks like maybe a medallion. And some you know, I have a button with that symbol on it. Really? Yeah, I have an old button with that symbol right on it. Some three-legged chicken on there. And it has the same <laughs> name on it. It's a button with that exact thing on it. Wow. Yeah, You're finding cool. that kind of stuff, and here's the kind of stuff I'm finding. Hey, that's not bad. Spoons are always a good find. Well, I can't tell if it's plated silver or if it's old or new or... Mm, but the, yeah. the bowl looks really deep, it like does. an old it's spoon. A different, it's a different looking spoon, that's for sure. And it kind of looks like it's silver plated, doesn't it? It does. So, well, there's my find of the day. Okay. Alright, you guys. Welcome back. We're going to do a wrap up. It's getting late. And it's not even 4 o'clock, and it feels a lot later than that, doesn't it? For sure. We had fun. We didn't find a whole lot of old, old stuff, but we found some pretty cool stuff. At least these guys did. These guys made my videos while I brought them all. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're going to show you what we found, and then uh, we're going to hit the road. This is one of your first detections ever, right? This is my first detections with professionals teaching me and helping me. That's, that's right. Okay. And, and, and it worked. And it worked. <laughs> It, yeah, because you got some he, good stuff. He found, he found the oldest things he's ever found. Yeah. So, show us what you found. Well, first, my button, and it does, uh, it has a flattened shank. So, my first button ever. That's awesome. And then just some nails and other pieces and some crockery. Square nails, though. They're not round square, nails. Yeah. There's a square. Yeah. So square old. nails. And, um, but this lady's pin. Yep, that's a brooch. Um... And it is could be diamonds, uh, who knows? I don't think they are, uh, but I did see a little bit of gold or plating yep. on the back. Yep, that's good. But that's real pretty. And then just a bunch of junk. And you know, and this uh, he found this, and this is old. I mean, this typically is like 1700s old. Okay, so here's what I found, you guys. I found a lot of mason jars up here. I found a lot of crockery, which I'm happy. So I'm going to give this to the landowner. I didn't film this. It's an old pulley spoon. I found two of these. Now I lost the other one. I was showing the the landowner the other one. I have no clue what happened to it. Uh, found quarter, a dime, my only wheat cent, some pennies. Trashy, trashy, trashy. Now let's get over here where Randy. Randy's got some good stuff. So. We saw the lock. I showed you guys that. It's not a range guide, but it's, no, it's door pull. Door pull. Mm -hmm. It's a door pull. And I told Randy, I probably got this on video. I do have a button with this exact symbol and emblem on it. I want to send it to him. I just looked it up, and it says uh, what that reads is God is our hope. God is our hope. Mm -hmm. Wow. So I wonder if that's, uh, I mean, obviously it's a religious thing. Yeah. A medallion. 
Yeah. Um, I have to do some more research. Yeah, because I found I found a button with that on that exact that's, emblem and that. Well, that's on what there. it says that there was, and and this could have been a button, and just wherever the shank was, it's just big. Yep. But not sure. Yep. And then uh, this, uh, we believe it to a gun. You've been told that it might be a pistol to a pistol. Yeah, yeah it could be, but I'm not sure. Um, you see these holes? I believe that would have gotten pinned in. Yep. through a stock and this would have been uh for your sling yep and this would have been you know one of the guides there would have probably been another one down on the barrel somewhere and this would have been for your ramrod where that goes not sure of the time era uh hoping it's civil war i i think it but, could be absolutely uh, or pioneer know, it's, it's definitely of course it's heavy because it's full of dirt but and we found we found the Shriners coin. That's yep. uh, an Indian head, 1903, 1904. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you know his find of the day. I'll send you guys pictures of that. He didn't bring it out. He's got it put away in safekeeping. Oh yeah, I did. So, yeah. It's a it's a it's a Confederate two piece buckle, which is awesome. Yeah. I mean, that would have made anyone's find of the day. Yeah. I tell you. Yeah. I really was trying to find that other half of it, but yep, it's probably in there somewhere. Yep. Yep, so thank you guys for tagging along. I hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you guys on the next one.